Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelly, I'm a sixth grade teacher in Northern California, and today I have another video in my new school series that I'm super excited about. I've designed this series specifically with first year teachers in mind, new teachers, that means you got your first job and you're spending this summer freaking out, trying to get all the resources, all the information that you possibly can to have the smoothest first year possible. With that in mind, the video that I have for you today are five things that I wish I knew before I started my very first year of teaching. All right, so we're gonna get right into it, but before we do, a couple of things. The first thing is, these aren't necessarily gonna be like tips for first year teachers, that's gonna be a whole nother video. These are gonna be five things that I wish somebody sat me down and said, look, you need to know this, or you need to do a little bit of homework on this for your specific site. So that'll make more sense as we get through this video. But I just wanted to clarify. Second thing is I wanted to keep you informed on some videos that are coming up that I think will be really, really important for you. One of those, of course, is tips for first year teachers. Another one that has been really highly requested is what should you prep during the summer before your first year? So that is a video that will be coming out soon. I'm also gonna be doing things I regret buying for my first year, classroom must-haves, ideas for the first day of school, and then of course my classroom setup vlog. So if those sound like something that you need, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get notified every time I post. I'm trying to stay on a schedule, it's getting a little bit tricky because I have a baby. He's unpredictable, so I'm going with the flow. All right, enough about that. Let's get into these five things that I wish I knew my very first year. These aren't gonna be in any order or anything, but this first one is pretty big and I think it's really important. Um, and it seems kind of like, duh, but I'm gonna tell it to you because I think you need to internalize it, sleep on it, and, and find it within yourself to make it happen. So, the first thing that I wish somebody told me was, it is okay to speak up your first year. And what I mean is, in a staff meeting, in your grade level collaborations, it's perfectly fine and almost expected for you to have a voice. And I know that's really hard your first year, I'm guilty of it, because you just wanna say, sit back and like take it all in. But they hire you for a reason. You have good ideas and the people around you deserve to hear those ideas. So quick little example, I remember my first year teaching, they were talking about the recess schedule, something super like trivial in a staff meeting and I had a really good like solution, but I was too afraid to say anything and I just kind of sat back and then it wasn't until the beginning of next year where I finally found the courage to like suggest it and that's what kind of what we ended up using. So point being is just because you're brand new does not mean you don't have good ideas. So find it within yourself, find the courage to speak up, share some ideas, even if they get shot down, like whatever. They'll respect you more for at least having the guts to say something. This also goes with team collaborations. If you wanna try something, try it. Share it with your team, if they don't wanna do it, great, but they will appreciate your voice just as much as you're gonna appreciate theirs. So first thing I wish I knew was it's okay to speak up and share ideas. The second thing may or may not differ depending on where you're teaching and your site. However, the second thing that I wish somebody sat me down and told me was the curriculum that you are handed is a guide, it is not a script. That means that you have full authority to skip lessons, add things in, use the assessment or don't. You have the professional integrity to decide what's going to be the best for your students. In my opinion, the best way to attack curriculum is spend this summer right now really getting to know your content standards for the grade level that you're going to teach. And once you really understand those, you're going to be able to look at the curriculum and say, I can skip that. That's going to be way too much for my kids or that's kind of a waste of time. Adapt the curriculum to best fit your group of kids and that's going to change from year to year. But, but know that it's okay to manipulate that curriculum to best fit your students, especially the assessments. I found that in some of the curriculum that was handed to me, some of the assessments just didn't match exactly what I was trying to get them to learn or it was way too hard or easy, one or the other. So it's okay to create your own assessments as long as you can provide that data, right? So just know that it is a guide. You do not have to follow it to a T. But if you do follow it to a T, good for you. That's what it's there for. So. I'm just throwing that out there because I was overwhelmed by it, so I wish somebody would have told me like, hey, it's cool. You don't gotta follow it all. The third thing I wish I understood my first year is that it is okay to change routines, activities, 
behavior management, all sorts of things throughout the year. I promise you, there will be something that does not work for your class, your first year of teaching. Almost every year I've taught, there's something that I've had to change mid-year. And my first year of teaching, I was so afraid to break a routine because I thought, oh my God, my kids are gonna freak out. It's okay. I ended up probably changing about 50% of the things that I thought were gonna work my first year. Um, and it wasn't until a mentor teacher said, look, if it's not working, you gotta change it. You have to just stop Spend the time to reteach a new routine because if it's not working for you or your kids, you're wasting time. So as, as scary as it might seem to change something, you gotta do it. For example, I used a clip chart in the very beginning of third grade, my very first year. Hated it. Some people love it. I hated it. The kids did not like it. They weren't buying in. And I was so afraid to change, like I mean, behavior management's a huge thing, right? I was so afraid to just scrap it and try something else, but I had to, it, it wasn't working. So. Point being is, you're gonna have to change things. Don't be afraid, the kids are resilient and they will adapt, as will you. All right, this fourth one is a really big one and this is definitely gonna require some extra research on your end, depending on what state you're in, what kind of school you're at, all sorts of things. Um, but I was very naive my first year of teaching and I had to ask a lot of questions. Um, so, this is something maybe you could do to get ready for the year. And that is everything regarding special education. I need to figure out how to say this the right way. I wish I knew how to properly collaborate with the SPED team, and I wish I knew the processes to get my kids special education resources. When you're student teaching, you briefly hear like IEPs and things like that, the, the jargon kind of gets thrown around, but you don't really actually, at least I didn't actually get to experience a lot of that firsthand. Things that I would encourage you to understand before your first year is look at an IEP, go online and just look through them so you know what it looks like. Um, and know that you and the special education team are responsible for making sure those goals are being worked on all year long. I found that that myself and the special education team weren't necessarily collaborating well enough to, to meet those goals and I was frustrated because I wasn't doing my part to best serve my kids. So that was something I wish I would have looked into more going into my first year. Another big one is to know like how to properly advocate for those kids who probably aren't getting the SPED resources that they actually need. You're with them every day, you know if they need some extra help, and I didn't even know where to start. Luckily my administration helped me through it, but SSTs are a big one, and I was like, what's an SST? Essentially it's a meeting where all the parents and everyone get together and we have that first conversation of like, okay, we, we are noticing some things, how do we move forward? I didn't even know what that was my first year. So again, I felt like I was kind of a disservice to some of my kids and I hate that, but I learned. Hopefully, like I said, you can do some research now to make sure that you're best advocating for those kids. So I guess my best tip for the whole special education section of this is communicate with people around you, ask a lot of questions, and be an advocate for those kids who are receiving these type of extra resources. Okay, so the last thing is probably the most important in my mind and the hardest pill to swallow and that is it is okay to just survive your first year of teaching i know i know some of you want to go above and beyond and do all the things and if that's you great i'm not saying don't do that i'm saying it's okay if you don't do that. Your first year is such a whirlwind you are learning every single day about your kids, about things that are working for you. Just It's just a whirlwind, it really is. And a lot of times you're just trying to keep your head above water and going day by day to survive. And that's okay. Every teacher has been there. So you don't have to volunteer, they'll understand. You don't have to run a club, they'll understand. You don't have to be on all of the committees, they will understand. It's okay to just survive year one. Self-care is so important as a teacher in general, any year, but especially this first year. So if you just need to do the bare minimum to survive year one, that's all right. You heard it here first, it's okay. Okay, so those are the five big ones, things that I wish a teacher sat down and told me and had a conversation about. I could probably sit here and talk about each one for 30 minutes, but hopefully you have some teachers in your life. Hey, I'm one, we can talk down below that you can flesh some of these things out with. If you have any other questions going into your first year, please leave them down below. I'm not the only teacher in this community. I know a ton of you out there 
are always down in the comments helping each other out and I love that about the community that we've created here on YouTube. So if this is your first year, take a breath, you're gonna rock it. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the other videos that are probably gonna be really helpful to you. I love you guys so much and I'm so excited for your first year and for your teaching journey. It really is the best job in the entire world. I love you so much and I will see you in the next video.